Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We've had breakfast today, usually. I know, look at the table. Look at that table. The table's here. Can you and see it? We had breakfast on it, yeah. We did. It just means that I can work down here now and see the garden a bit more. Yeah. Because my office still isn't really my office. It's just sort of a room with boxes everywhere. Yeah. And the lighting's quite bad at the moment still. Yeah. So when it's like properly my office, it'll be lovely. But at the moment, it's a bit sort of dingy. So we watched um, Les Mis, the live concert last we night. We did. <clears throat> you, you got sent a little pre-screening. Yeah, I got sent like a special link. So yeah. I could see it before it came out. Because I think it's out on Monday. Yeah. I don't think the, like, the actual physical copy is out because I think that's been pushed back mm. because of manufacturers and all that kind of jazz. Don't take that, don't, don't quote me on that because I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. But I think the release date has been pushed back to like November. But mm. I think like the digital release I think is still Monday. How does it feel to watch yourself on the big screen? That was the first time I'd seen it. Yeah. Because I didn't go to the cinema to see it. <clears throat> Most of the cast went and I was like, I don't think I can sit and watch it. I don't think I can sit and watch myself. Because I'm still too like close to that production. And I yeah. feel like I and I was about to just go into the Sondheim as Fontaine as well. So I felt like I was just gonna sit there and overanalyze mm. everything I did and wish I'd done it differently or like suddenly, suddenly when you see yourself from the outside, you're like, oh my god, is that what my face looks like? Is that, mm. instead of just being on stage and feeling it and, and, you know, not thinking about what your face is doing because you're just feeling, not to sound wanky, but you're just feeling the story and the yeah. lyrics and whatever, suddenly you can see yourself from the outside. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I've got to do this now because that looks good. And yeah. like, you're not actually in it anymore. You're just, it's just, well, yeah. So I, I never saw it. So last night was the first mm. time I saw it. It's good that it's going to be like immortalised though. That's yeah, really, it's really cool. cool. Like from you, so when you're an old woman, you can be like, yeah. this is the the DVD or yeah. whatever. It'll be, on, well, it'll be on a DVD then, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. It'll be on the inside of your glasses. Yeah. 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 But you'd be like, yeah, put these glasses on and watch me do Fontaine. <laughs> that's really exciting. That yeah. It's, it's going to be forever. Well, I just feel just really honoured because like, Carol McIntosh could have picked anyone. Yeah. Like he is the amount of people that have played Fontaine over the years. Yeah. And I will say it, women who are much smaller than I am, who look much different than I. Yeah. And so I just feel really honoured that I was the one that you picked. You yeah. know, my round face and my gaffy teeth. Well, obviously, he obviously really likes you. You then went to the Sondheim, and, mm. and now you're, playing, you're still playing Fontaine, so you obviously really like well, I would be playing Fontaine if it wasn't for coronavirus. Yeah, but I mean, you are Fontaine. Yeah. So. But yeah, no, it was, it was nice and uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was so fun to see like, because I never saw it from out front. Yeah. Like even all the bits that I wasn't in, like I got to see like the opening of the show and it's just like all the, all the lights going up. It's just epic. Mm. It's funny when you're backstage because you almost like desensitise yourself to the gravity of Les Mis, like the grandeur of the show because you hear it every night and you, you know. Mm. But because you hear it so often, you're like, oh yeah, it's just the show, this is just the job. And you go on yeah. stage and you do your bit, you do your part of the story, and then, you know, it's kind of it. Mm. But then when you're actually like in the audience and watching it, because I haven't seen, I haven't actually sat and watched Les Mis from the audience since I got into it in 2013. Yeah. So technically last night is the first time I watched Les Mis in seven years, even though I've been in it. And yeah, you just forget. You just forget mm. how like amazing that opening is, and yeah. especially things like the people that you're working with as well, like Alfie Alfie Bo's voice. Yeah, because you hear it every night. You're like, oh yeah, and it's just Alfie. Like you work with Alfie, it's just Alfie. Yeah. But then when you sit and watch it, you're like, oh my god, yeah. his voice is insane, and like, yeah, it's just crazy. It is interesting, um, like on the point of like <clears throat> when you're in a show, like you know the ins and outs of the show naturally but it's when you get into the run of it like there are moments of a show that you will just never see yeah there are bits either it's you're doing a quick change or you've got such a break you can't really sit in the wings and watch because you'll get you'll way. get in people's way so you, if you've got a massive break you'd go either like sub stage to a quick change area or you'd go back to your dressing room either or so like in for like back to the future for example there, there were bits i've not seen in the Adams family, death is just around the corner. 
I would never see that unless I purposely sat and watched it. Yeah. You know, so to have like a DVD version of a show you've been in, it like it is really it's enlightening because yeah. you're like, oh my god, I can see that now. I can see why people laugh at Matt so much or yeah. whatever. So it is. Or there's, there's things like where you hear a laugh and you're like, what are they doing yeah. on stage to get that laugh? Yeah. And then you see it and you're like, oh my god, that's what it was. That's why mm. I heard that laugh every night. That's so funny. So it is weird being in a show and knowing the show so well, but then also like there are bits you never see. Yeah. And uh, you know, it is. It, it this is this is the thing about bootlegs though, because. Actors are against, I mean, I can't, I can't speak for everyone, but I feel like I'm against bootlegs when they, dis, like, when they distract from the actual show. So if someone's like really obviously got their phone out or you can see like the, the light of the screen on your face and you yeah. can see like the blinking red, I do wish people just wouldn't do it because risking that kind of distraction isn't really worth it because it's yeah. not just distracting like the audience around you or the people next to you. It's it, like we're, we can see it we absolutely 100% can see yeah. it most of the time. But then when you get those bootlegs that resurface like years later and you can't remember anymore whether you saw that person with that camera or not, yeah. suddenly you're like, oh my God, I am gonna watch it because it's, you know, it's been like however many years yeah. since. Like I found a Heather's one the other day. Of course, I never got to see Heather's from out front yeah. and we had people recording all the time. So I can't like, now I can't remember whether I saw them with their camera or not. So now I'm sort of like, well, it was three years ago, two years ago, however long. Mm. It's been filmed now, like, what can I do? Yeah. Might as well watch it. <laughs> yeah. Someone sent me uh, me singing I Believe. Yeah, uh, I re- I've, a days ago. I remember you telling me that. And I watched it back, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, it feels a bit like an out of body experience when you watch yeah. it back, you're like, oh God, like, I found a bootleg of me as Jane Banks in Mary Poppins the other day. Like from, that is amazing because that, that's it, insane. That must have been filmed on a potato. Like that. Yeah. Because if I was eleven, so that's almost seventeen years ago. That's a bootleg from almost seventeen years ago. That's insane. Yeah. That, that was really nice though. I sat and watched bits of that, and I was like, oh my god, because I I remember I remember like I remember yeah. being on stage, and I remember getting to like certain points in the show. There was one point in the show. I remember my feet used to ache so much because I had these amazing slippers. They were from Harrods, but they like squeezed my mm. toes. I remember being stood there in Anything Can Happen, where we sort of just stood on the side with Mary watching things happen. Mm. And I just remember my feet hurting so much. Yeah. It's so funny having like weird memories like that. Yeah. Yeah, sort of like a bootleg is a little story. You know this one, but the guys don't know it. So there's this like famous Mormon story where a guy messed up. Big time. Big time. <laughs> so, for people who know Book of Mormon, in the second number, two by two, um, the elders form a line and step forward when your name is called. Like that is all done live. And I used to cover it, so I've done it. Um, so it's done in a little like, booth at the back and you've got like a little screen and the, and the mic's there. So you get the screen, you can see everyone dancing. Cause it's all like done by time mm-hmm. and stuff and you've got the headset on. And anyway, so that's a person does that. Uh, he's like the mission president. So this is a Saturday, um, and our Elder Cunningham does the um, first, the, does the matinee, um, but then he goes off in between shows, so he doesn't do the evening show. Our first cover was on holiday, I think, and our second cover, like it was there for three years, I think, three years, and it got on nine times. Oh my god! Three years. And nine shows. That's insane. And this was his like ninth show, I believe, or maybe like his seventh, I think. But anyway, it was like a big deal. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, he's, he's on, on! He's on! He's on! My god, he's on!" And I wasn't on that night either because I was a swing, so I wasn't needed. So what we did, um, my mate Alex in the show was like, "What I'll do? I'm gonna like record it, not like film it, but with, like yeah, audio voice, audio. voice note. So you know, like, he can he can have like his Something. show." Yeah. You know, it's nice. Anyway, <clears throat> so rep two by two, um, and uh, uh, the guy's mission president's doing this like his bit. He's like, elders, form a line. Step forward when your name is called. He's like, Elder Young, and he's like, yes, sir. Your mission brother will be, and he's supposed to say, Elder Grant. But in his head at the time, this is what he said. He was watching the show just before that line. 
and he looked and was like, oh my God, Reese is on for Cunningham. And he got really confused because obviously he didn't hear the announcement in between shows and was like, where's Brian, who, who does play Cunningham? Anyway, Elder Cunningham, the word Cunningham was in, was in his brain, but he had to say Elder Grant next. So he mixed the beginning of Cunningham and the end of Grant. So he went, Elder Young, your mission brother will be Elder Cunt. <laughs> but it was the fact that he elongated it yeah. so much because he suddenly realised what he did halfway yeah. through and it's like, oh my god, I've got to end with an NT. Yeah. He's like, Cah. and you he, he can hear the fear in his voice. Ah. Like, ah, and he does a hard tea. And honestly, I was in the in the uh, dress circle at the back of the dress circle, and I heard it. I had to grab my penis because I was, <laughs> you know, because I was going to wee myself. And I was like, ah, at the back of this, the, the the dress circle, going, oh my god, because all my mates are on stage. Because the, the direction, we're all all the Mormons are like looking up to Mr. Yeah. President, going like. Where are we gonna go? It's all like that. Yeah. And it happened. I could see them all go <laughs> like all of them. All, their shoulders all of all the Mormons. <laughs> and then because then Brendan, who was who plays Elder Cunt or Elder Grant, was like, his line is, Hey, that's me! Hey brother! Like it's supposed to be like really happy, but it was like, hey, that's me! Hey brother. So that being said, because of uh, Alex was there recording that show because of uh, Reese being on for Cunningham, there is an Elder Cunt recording. I love it so much. It's so funny. And I've got it. It's so good. And yeah, everyone's heard it in the, like, the West End. And, uh, yeah. Goes, you even played it to my brother. Yeah. And was Dougie there as well? We put it to him? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Thanks for popping by everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Be safe out there. Don't eat yellow snow. Eat yellow snow. Oh, that's just tasty. Bye.